then they've been having some problems. So let me, we're not going to be using them much longer, but thank you, BeLive, for allowing us to have 636 episodes so far. My God. Okay, I do see us up, and I do see us up, and let me see if uh, our sound's okay. Yeah. All right, so it's okay. Sounds all right with you? Sounds Paul? great. Good here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let's just give them, we got four people in the house. Let's give them about another, since the original uh, post got deleted by Facebook. Thank you, Facebook, for allowing us to use. I was wondering the, uh, where that went. <laughs> I know, man. <laughs> well, you know, I, you know, Be Live is an interface, obviously, with Facebook. Yeah. And, um, so, like I said, 630 something episodes, but. So I've, they don't have like a foolproof software and I've managed to find all the little bugs and then work around them. But I went in and changed the time zone I was in and I knew I shouldn't have done that. So half of BeLive is recognizing where I'm at and half of it. Anyway, they screwed it up. No doubt. So I'm, I'm going to probably have to go switch it back to New York and they'll probably screw it up again. But I don't think we're going to be using it much longer. This may be one of the last, uh, it actually will be one of the last shows where we're using BeLive. Nice. So they won't be getting our money anymore. <laughs> 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 All right. So we got 24 people in the house. Um, let me uh, set up the uh, control panel and uh, we will formally roll the show out. Uh, I think there's more than that. Hello, Nicole Jomphy, uh, Paula Whitmarsh, Atherton, old, old, longtime supporter, Tanya Moonbeam. She says YouTube. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Karen Isis is in the house. Karen, I could not get my passport. That's why I didn't end up in Thailand. Now I'm in Hawaii. Doreen Kinney, Helena Erickson, Laurie Kay, Sherry Randall, Cherry Randall. So there's some uh, new faces here. Uh, mm -hmm. Greetings to everybody. My name's Todd Medina. This is Soul Speaks 5D. Uh, this is our primary show on the Solo G Network. Uh, we have uh, this show, which is, uh, like I said, Soul Speaks 5D. It's a conversation with, and today it's Paul Wyrostick. Uh, Paul is a spiritual teacher and channeler of healing since a child. He's always seen forms of energy from the darkest to the brightest. Over many years of healing and clearing his own energy, I discovered he discovered the powerful connection that he has with universal oneness and many forms of light, including masters, archangels, other facets of his higher self uh, to bring healing as well as understanding uh, to people's past, impasse, light workers worldwide. Through the healing sessions, group healings, and workshops, he brings healing and light energy from the higher selves of clients to release and clear out any energy that no longer serves them and connect them to the light energy, as well as information from universal oneness, bringing in healing and direction to all healers. And so let me just add to that. Uh, we're all healers. And what I love about uh, what he has to say in his bio is that he uh, he's an energy healer and he teaches people how to tap into that energy uh, and in the sessions that he has, uh, he's doing, he's working his higher self, working with their higher self, basically, or higher aspects. So, uh, like all the real healers, he teaches others how to heal and connect. Right. So, welcome to the show, Paul. Thank you for coming on and sharing space with us and honoring us with your presence. Thank you, Todd. Definitely an honor. And I knew this is uh, this time was coming, and everything's perfect timing. And as always, and I feel we are on the beginning. Not even a cusp, but we're, we're past the cusp. But like we are in the new, uh, a new uh, energy where everything is just going to go moving forward. So, yeah, it's an honor to be here. Absolutely. And it's an honor to have you here. Uh, and timing is everything. Synchronicity, timing and serendipity, the grace of the gods and goddesses we are. We're talking offline a little bit. I know there's a delay on my end, but you're coming in fine. Uh, so. You know, I said to you, wow, you, know, you said to me, wow, man, it's really going down. This is all happening. And, uh, and yeah, it is. And then you said something that I think needs to be discussed. And we can go into a little bit more about you in a little while. But uh, and that is what we call, we used to call shadow work. We call inner work. But you said, you know, this thing is regulated, basically, 
uh, driven by the amount of inner work that we do on ourselves, period, end of story. Uh, that was my period <laughs> and end of story comment. But would you, as an energy healer, you know, what are your views on this evolution, uh, being that you've been in the game for quite some time and doing energy work for so long? Uh, what are your views on what's happening? Uh, and could you expand uh, as to the direct relationship between doing inner work and what happens in our experience on an individual level? Yeah, it's like, wait, you know, the the people that are unconscious to this or everybody's at a different stage of, of their awakening, so to speak. And for the people that have, you know, with this shift that's been building up for a long time, especially like the past year, I feel I've been speaking about this particular moment, the build of this moment. And it's everything's with timing that there's so many light workers around the world that are awakening. And I have this really awesome view as a channeler of healing to have clients worldwide that I'm seeing the results. I'm seeing how they're popping up all over the world and how, how there's a timing to all of this. And that as I'm working on somebody, I'm like releasing, um, you know, it's almost like lifting the veil, you know, helping the, you know, the eggshell cracks. And then it's like helping peel the pieces away and then say, Hey, hello, you're here. And everybody that's on this path, all the, all of these empaths and light workers that are in their light or finding their light or know that there's something going on, there's something bigger, there's something different. Um, you know, we have a choice whether we want to embrace that or not. We have free will and free choice. So we have the choice to say, do we want to go forward on this spiritual path? Are we willing to do to adult and take the painstaking path of facing our fears, facing our traumas, facing our insecurities, facing our, our uh, unworthiness, our, uh, and all of that fun stuff, and start to peel it away and move towards that light or embrace their truth or do they want to stay back into the energy of ego and just and just avoid and avoid and avoid so over the past year i've been telling people that you know the more work that you do the more results that you're going to get out of this shift so i lost todd for a minute so that's pretty much the basis of everything that that it's all about. Now, I'm still here. So it's that's the it's that's the basis. It's that you know it's so much easier to face the things that are surfacing because this movement of light that we've been going through that's constant. It's just constant, and it's going to continue to be constant, and it's going to continue to be more intense. Um, the more we're willing to. Uh, release these things that are surfacing from this light energy coming in the more we're willing to just face it and just uh you know be exposed and let these layers peel away the, the more results we're going to get out of it so this yeah. is a it's a really beautiful a beautiful can you hear me can you hear me yeah i could hear you fine okay, okay good i just had to reboot that mm -hmm. yeah that's a great great point great line of uh commentary so let me ask you this as as a you know so many people i see out there and they're like oh he can do that and she can do this and how do you do that and i wish i could do that and uh, but as a an, an experienced uh energy healer with with quite a bit of longevity uh, are you finding that the people that you're working with are making the connection quicker are the processes and modalities that applied before maybe being fast tracked now or not even necessary or is is the evolution of the learning curve changing yeah it's extremely extremely quick i notice that the people that are drawn to me are people that are ready to have a session with me um because there are people at a cer certain levels of their ascension that just kind of won't get it um and you know i i know that i'm here for a reason i, I know that i was born to do this, chosen, I chose to do this. So through my path of over 10 years of channeling uh, for people that I noticed that this, that it's almost like universal oneness is bringing me specific people, okay? Yeah. 
uh, and I've I've just watched this as like as like this uh, Sherlock Holmes kid in me is starting starts to notice the patterns of everything going on, and it's like these are these are people that are meant to that are ready to awaken. So the people that come, it's very rare that people will come to me and be, you know, really lower, you know, uh, kind of like lowered in their energy of or, or a lowered way of thinking uh, of of it. So the people that come to me, it's usually people that are right on there. They, they get what I say right away. So it's usually very smooth. Now, that being said, there is, see, universal oneness is, it's pure love. It's unconditional love. It's truth. It's safety. It's security. It's abundance. It's calm. It's gentle. It's beautiful. So when it comes to all the different modalities, it, you know, what boils down to it all is truth, is light. And a lot of people's souls are awakening at this time. So what happens is they resonate with truth. So whether that truth comes through you, whether that truth comes through me, whether it comes through a song in the radio, the soul is listening and it's awakening. So it's like a moths to a flame kind of. Yeah. You know, yeah, that, answered that right. well. <laughs> no, no, that's right. That's right. And uh, yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, and so you're these people are being drawn to you, and in in you know in a nutshell, I guess uh, in the uh, the yin yang of it, you're being drawn to them, mm. but it's being driven by the intentions of the heart, the heart of the intentions. That's right. And so my question to you, as as an energy worker and practitioner, is is there a direct relationship too between the level of shadow and illusion and trauma and all that that we remove and our clarity as to what our purpose is. Yeah. And therefore, absolutely. For alignment with our intentions and heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everything is removed in layers of an onion. That's how I, it's been explained to me. And it's the best way to explain it. So everybody is at their own specific level and every, and what happens is when with the intention, um, to connect to source masters and angels they're all part of it um what happens is the light of of the particular person is connected to reconnected or and from to their higher self and what happens is the amount that is released is in accordance to what is of the highest of good for that person so everybody's going through their own levels of trauma blame shame guilt fear uh, alcoholism, rape, and all this stuff, uh, darkness, uh, attachments, and all the all past life stuff, and cords, and so everybody comes with their own specific package of what's going on. So the layer, some people will have a lot more layers than other people, but everything is in perfect timing with each individual person. So a person that awakens to their, you know, at their time to have their healing or to uh, you know, no matter who it is, it's it's all in divine time. It's almost like something that cannot be rushed. Um, you know, when it happens, it's it's the it's like a flower opening up. It's ready at that time. And then if people are ready, if they're ready, truly ready to release, if they're true, truly ready to not necessarily surrender, but to allow these things to come off, that's when I notice it'll be people will change a lot quicker than somebody that has, you know more resistance to it yeah yeah and 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 to your point earlier and to something that lisa brown lisa transcendence brown talks about is we're now in the quantum mm. no longer linear it's quantum so yeah to me that affects everything you know the the everything. speed and capacity to learn expand you know whatever other synonyms you want to use um so you have uh you know you have a direct relationship between uh, this inner work and the superabundance slash peace slash love so on of the experience. And uh, it seems to me, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. It seems to me that when we get right down to it, it and it's so hard to contain this in words, but it's about life. It's about living. And certainly, uh, presence in the present moment and then the other side of the equal sign to me is creation which is where this all starts so it's like there's something happening 
in a creative frequency that ties in telepathy, intuitiveness, imagination, uh, and, uh, and and it seems to be uh, that it, you know it seems to be that when we have enough clarity, we align with our purpose, which comes from our heart, and and then and we move into this environment, five D, whatever you want to call it, where it's all about service in a totally different way, aligned with from your heart. You know, how do you Absolutely. feel about that? It's absolutely about service. It's about, it's also, sir, it's like service of self too. It's like, it's when, it's when we're finally meeting our true selves face to face. And so it's, you know, it's not, it is service overall, but it doesn't always mean necessarily service to others. It's service to the self of like, okay, you've done it. You've done it. You've been through hell. You've been through the 3D world. Now it's time to, to come over here. And that's what it feels like when I have clients and it's almost like source energy brings them over. I clear them off and energetically by releasing these layers of things, they immediately are able to enter into this, this other dimension. So I'm, I've been noticing over 10 years, this split. So I've always said since the very beginning to source energy, bring me the appropriate clients. Like, I don't want to just work on anybody that's going to not understand or kind of abuse it or use it to enable them to continue to do bad. So I knew that each person was being brought, you know, that was appropriate uh, for me to work on them. But over the years, I noticed that I stepped back. I'm like, these people are being like slid over, you know, this, this, there's a big thing that's happening over here. And it's, me, as far as many other uh, channelers of healings around the world, we're all getting this movement of people. So we are entering into this service for sure. Uh, and we're, you know, even what you're doing, every all of us are light workers, and in one way or the other, we're helping people usher them. Hey, come here, you know, there's something better over here. You've done that before. You've gone around and around and around the block. You've been through the blame and the shame and the guilt and all that stuff. There's a better life. So. I'm noticing that I don't really, it's in human words, it's almost like we're being picked, but yeah. not really because we're already, we are that light. So we're coming home. Okay. Yeah. So this whole human experiment thing where we're all created from the cr creator and a co-creator and a co-creator, and, and we've been given the free will and free choice and the light of God to be a creator God and to create our own lives. Well, yeah. Millennia, there was a, a detachment from that. Okay. And when we, these creator beings weren't just creating out of light anymore, they were started to create over wants, needs, and desires. Okay. Their own. So it started to get de detached from light. So what this is, and that's where all the darkness started coming into the world and different dimensions, and it goes really, really, it's super quantum where I'm going right now. But yeah. Um, but what happened is this whole movement, Todd, that everything is going on where the masters and angels, why you, myself, and other light workers are were just instantly poofed on this earth at this time, was to help bring this movement of light, bring it back to the original source. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I, and I think too, yes, absolutely. I don't think you're going to quantum there. <laughs> I think what's interesting about this whole thing as, and, and I want to get your views on this. Okay. So we come from this perception of the past. Uh, our only recollection for the most part is this incarnation. We've got some past live incarnations and so on. I look at that body of work or body of experience and, uh, that's all a story it's all a story and and so it served us right it right. served us we went and now at the same time we've got this unseen aspect of us let's just put it that way which is galactic and future lives and and divine essences all these aspects of ourselves right and and they have served a purpose right and i look at this kind of in a yin yang way i'm like wait a minute I, I can't attach to anything behind me, so I can't attach to any of these things either, because they don't define me. They're all—it's all a part of me. Right. It's and, all and a part so, of you experiencing. Right. 
a different right. experience at the same time, really. Yes. And so that's where I was going with my question as an energy worker, practitioner, energy healer. Um, so are you seeing a difference now in people in their ability to let go of the experiences that we had that quote unquote weren't even real and or to let go of these essences that they identify with oh i was the son of buddha or you know right. i was so and so in a past incarnation are you seeing a change in that are you seeing uh, a change in the mindset uh, or an expansion of the mindset in terms of of letting go of those things be they parallel past or future galactic? absolutely absolutely it's like you nailed that perfectly because it's almost like you know when i first started this work it was like past life healings and you know, you're going in and you're cutting cords. And I had this tremendous World War II connection that took years for me of healing to release. So I know how powerful it can be. But it's almost like getting to the point, like you said, to where it's like, a, it's not applicable anymore. See, the third dimension is the only dimension that's linear, that has a past and the future, right? So we were kind of like living in this box, this or this paper towel tube, I call it, effect. OK, where there's only here and there, but through this whole quantumness that's going on with the, the the box walls are breaking open and we're able to look through them and say, wait a minute, there's something over there. Wait a minute, there's something sideways here. It's not just forward and backwards. And this is really messing with people now. Right. Yeah. So ultimately, there really isn't any past lives or future lives they're all simultaneous lives happening at the exact same time yeah we're just and they're just popping up in our third dimension as here or as here yeah exactly yeah. exactly and and so on that note just to keep keep trying to cover everything across the board you know because there's like you said there's people and, and we hate to even use these words because i think we're all beaten at the same vibration just looks different yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, so there's these different parts of the spectrum let's put it that way um for somebody who's just coming into the part about the importance of inner work and the correlation of the depth of inner work in terms of the expansion of the experience how easy or difficult is it to remove these shadow pieces, if you you know, if we want to use that term, how how do we go about it? What's a simple way to do it? And and is it easy now? Uh, can it be easy? Uh, you know, can you talk about the you know that a little bit? Yeah, it's it it depends. There's a lot of layers. You know, but the person that awakens or that so-called awakens, you got to imagine at least their entire life up to that moment. So it's what hap what's happened to them through that. Other people have, some people have, the things that I hear that I channel healings to, that people have experienced, it's unreal that these things still happen on this earth. So when those people, though a lot of, some of those things will be easy, but there's some things that uh, they need help to release. So like when I met my teachers, I was as lost as can be. There was, I was not going to be able to find my way uh, and be able to release all the layers that were on me. So when I started having my healing sessions, it started pulling off these layers. Now, the more willing the person is, these layers release. A lot of the times though, we have to feel, we have to go, we have to, the experience comes out, okay? So it's like if they were avoiding this feeling for their entire lives, uh, there's a good chance that during the moment of releasing this energy, they're going to feel the pain of it, you know? So it's it all boils down to how willing that person is to say, you know what, I am done. I am done. You know what, I'm no more. Because the soul recognizes light, okay? The soul's going back to light. That's it. And uh, light goes to light. So what happens is it's almost like a gravitational pull. You could walk away from the pull of a black hole for so long, but imagine that black hole, a hole of light, right? We could say, you know, okay, it's pulling me this way, but I could still, uh, you know, mess around, screw off and avoid. But there's a certain point to where we can't pull, get away from the pull of light. So 
the what makes it easy or difficult is the resistance of releasing it's it's up to the person if the person so pain is the resistance of not letting it of not letting uh attachments or energy go okay so it's it's pretty much it depends on the person um but okay here's another aspect of it when i first started this work or when i first started having sessions one healing session would be like uh, a spirit attachment or a past life issue or okay let's work on this abandonment issue now i'm noticing in sessions that there is tons of stuff flying off. I'm talking a hundred to hundreds of times more powerful than yeah. I had it. So it's, it's keeping up with the Ascension process. Yeah, that's, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, somebody asked a question here. Uh, we, let me just restate it and then I'll comment and you can. So Samantha Hernandez says, does that go with astro projection just to be curious? And let me just say, first of all, it all comes down to our own, our own decision, our own discernment, whatever you want to call it. You know, that gut feeling, that intuitiveness. We don't know how this thing works. It's complex, man. What I'm looking at is totally different than what you're looking at. My son mm. used to say to me, you know, you can say the table's green, but how do I know my green's your green? You know? True. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, but my answer to that is, to me, astral projection is, is, is really uh, just actualizing, uh, you know, our one of our skills and abilities it's it's getting into our vehicle and and going wherever we want to go basically um i think that that does that is to, in my opinion anyway it's it is tied to directly uh the amount of inner work and illusion we've removed just like our it's part of the experience being expanded and it's directly related to the inner work absolutely Although, yeah, yeah Although some people, like yourself, I will say this, some people seem to come into this game uh, with certain uh, certain uh, specialties. Mm. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I ha I started off. It, you know, the out-of-body experience is, is, like you said, it's, an, it's to actualize, it's to initialize, it's, it's part of the um, process of ascension, okay? So... I mean, I remember as a kid, I had thousands of out-of-body experiences and I had no idea what it was. Um, and through those out-of-body experiences, I learned things. I started to watch over and over again. I started understanding what was happening energetically. And what I saw was that we're opening, we open up, especially when we're sleeping or in that relaxed state, we kind of open up to source energy. And I explain it like this. It's like trying to fit two gallons of water in a one gallon jug. Once we tap a certain amount of energy, we have no choice but to pop out of the body. So this is the first, you know, it's almost like we get to come out of the body and peek through the veil of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and, and because we came from, I think of my own that I had uh, before I was clearer, uh, it's, it's hugely impactful to the human brain. Yeah. <laughs> to the mind it's like yeah. what the, the wtf i'm different than everyone else you know i'm i'm connected to this angel or jesus or this or that yeah so but i think that part of it's uh parallel the the evolution of its parallel the ascension like you were talking about the other thing um so like uh you know the 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 ability to to do things such as uh teleportation and bilocation uh heightened telepathy do you see these things materializing in our lives in the near future yeah i'm seeing it right now i'm seeing it right now i'm seeing uh i almost uh almost ready to do a video on it but i haven't done it yet uh everybody's psych psychic ability is going to be uh maximized everybody's abilities whatever that is is going to be uh magnified okay so and also instead of synchronicities there's go well there's going to be less time in between synchronicities so in other words instead of a synchronicity let's eliminate the synchronicity and let's just have an instantaneous shift okay so things are quickening up big time um yeah. 
as far as the telepathy thing, as far as all that, that's all, of course, everybody ha is at their own specific level. Um, and that's where a lot of people are coming to me. And it's, it's funny because a lot of people that didn't even believe what I was do, what I would do five years ago or 10 years ago are now communicating, uh, co contacting me saying, Hey, I'm, I'm experiencing things I've never had before. And it's a good example of it is, uh, I started off doing a uh, haunted houses in person, right? Clearing houses for families that, and a guy I worked with, um, didn't believe a single thing I said. And for a long time, it would make fun of me. And after a couple of years went by, um, with everything going on in the house, the entire family was sleeping on the living room rug. And then he calls me and he's like, all right, all right, you know, come over, come over and take care of this. So that that's a funny uh, a memory that I had. And that was 10 years ago. Yeah. As far as the awakening process of people that, even the people that never believed in this before, would not you know that made fun of me and everything uh you know they're thinking different this time so excellent point and that's very true i i get a kick out of it because i see people poking <laughs> poke their heads in my stuff that, <laughs> you know, detached from me years ago uh it's a great question here a great question um from elizabeth hawkins so as we know some spirit attachments can make you very sick not everyone knows they have an attachment what's your advice on this now i want to give my opinion as 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 a non-practitioner i mean i think i we all we're all healers that's right i'm not I'm not a practitioner like you or morgan my partner so my answer is this and i'd love to hear what what the energy healer practitioner here across from me says is that uh my take on anything that's inside of me that's artificially implanted or however you want to define it i have direct link to infinite intelligence i can obtain any answer that i want certainly within the dominion uh, that i have over my own body which is mind heart body soul whatever you want to call it uh, i think there there is a new wave of energy teachers and healers and practitioners the yogi guru bs is gone yes okay we don't heal anyone we teach them how to heal themselves we're the same thing we're a mirror looking at each other so my answer to that <laughs> my answer to that would be you have absolute dominion i have absolute dominion i am a god i am a healer a magician an alchemist in a in all of that and so if there's anything wrong with me, I can plug in and find out. Um, and I may be a little bit off there, but I think that's the energy that we're moving into and that we're already in. I'd yeah. love to hear what you have to say in your experience as a practitioner. It's, that's exactly right. But a lot of people can say that but not feel it. So think of all the people that are at the – I don't mean this in any level or judgmental way, but think well, of – I get what you're saying. Absolutely. That are lost – Think about the people that are all under your vibration. Um, what happens is, uh, so they're in the energy of fear. The words you were speaking right there was not the energy of fear, right? It held the vibration of ownership. Of So what happens is that's, that is a higher vibration. So when you're at a higher vibration, those, those energies can't kind of get to you. But it's the people that are born in the real lower darkness. I mean really dark you know as far as orphanage uh foster homes uh um rape um real 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 darkness right um these people it's almost like if they heard if if they heard what you just said it's it doesn't yeah, it's yeah it's like a foreign yeah yeah um, and i and agree I, with you i agree with you i don't want to interrupt you but i i want to make that point because i am not <laughs> if you would have asked me this seven years ago mm -hmm uh when i was just going into my deep shadow work i would have said the same thing but uh and things were different then too i believe things were different i believe there was a strong element of control still by a nefarious fourth dimensional arconic energy whatever you want to call it because we weren't aware yet but right. my point is is i would not have known i did it remove a lot of stuff myself but it was in a very very difficult way that's right. And so, and so, you know, what you're saying, I just want to clarify that, that that's, 
I haven't, yeah. <laughs> I haven't, today is what it is today. Yeah. It yeah. It's what it is today. Right. So, yeah. But, um, yeah. So that, I think that's, uh, you know, important. Uh, very, very important. I really, really, uh, you know, it, well, you know, your role, I know my role and, and part of my role in tandem with my partner is, and others is to feed this energy, uh, with divine love and, and divine love is the same term as divine truth and divine trust and divine wisdom. And, and that is to hold true to the truth frequency, which I believe is self-empowerment. I believe that the old yogi guru method, and I'm not being disrespectful because sometimes what gets you to a certain point is not what That's gets right. you to the next one, That's is right. simply a disempowering vibration that could very well have been manufactured by the lower gods, if you will. Mm -hmm. Every, you know, I, um, everybody has, everybody's at their own level. And when you're really, really, really low, it's surprising what, light can be you know something dark could actually be a light if you're way down here yeah. a shadowy thing so we come up you know what i mean um so yeah it held its purpose at that time it did but everything's expanding so nothing is exactly the same all the time so anybody and i'm noticing this too anybody that's stuck in any sort of rigidness anybody that's stuck in any sort of pattern or habit to where they're like okay um, I'm going to pat my head, rub my belly and jump on one foot. And that's how I connect the source. Yeah. If eventually that's not going to work anymore. So yeah. every day we have to be completely like open to source within us to come out and, and pretty much be like, okay, you show me today. Universal one is like, or by yourself, what's going on. So people also have to be willing to let go because fear, uh, People like structure that have had a lot of chaos in their life. So they'll want to clamp onto something that's that worked and they'll hold that and they'll ride it off a cliff. And then it's a bunch. I'm finding a whole bunch of light workers. Honestly, 99% of my clients are light workers, empaths, uh, healers. And a lot of them, if they're not willing to change or even know that they have to change, they'll find themselves completely disconnected in the dark surrounded by uh lower vibration energies uh you know yeah that's right and you know and it's interesting too because you know i'm sure that on the literal sense there was certainly teetering with dna there was you know high level technologies implants whatever you know mm. we've got to a point now where the chemtrails and the gmos and 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 5g i don't give a damn what it is we're more powerful than any of that that's know? right but uh, at the same time if i look back at my journey as an example uh and i look back to the two years of what i perceived at the time <laughs> as pure hell but the best expansion i ever had when i was walking the streets for a couple of years uh the best, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah you know, and the value of that is just like, I mean, that's it, you know, but my point is I attracted certain things to myself. There was a reason I got in seven fights in the first six months mm -hmm. at 50 years old. There's a reason that certain energies were coming towards me. That's right. And the bottom line is, and it was a, you know, crazy trip like so many of us have had, but the bottom line was it was to pull that what we were terming as darkness, uncomfortable was to pull all that crap uh, off of my soul it was shrouding right. my soul so um you know i i just i just want to make that point that that uh you know it's it's not ultimately it's not anything <laughs> it's us you that's know right I mean? and that, people that, have to take responsibility that this stuff happens to them you know a lot of us are a lot of uh light powerful light light workers have the most darkest things happening to them and the first thing is is that we we tend to want we we are kind of born with some sort of enablement you know like i'm i'm light here you know i'm expecting things and when all these things happen we don't want to accept responsibility that we cause that or that that we cause that it's when we're able to understand and i used to get angry when somebody would say that 
you know, why would I bring that to myself? But over the healing and over the years, and when you can really understand that, and a lot of people can't understand that, they're not ready to see that yet. But when you understand that, yes, every single attachment, every single entity, and a lot of people don't believe in the spirit attachments and entities, but I was born in it. So um, I, I saw it a thousand times before I even met archangels and, you know, mass yeah, yeah, yeah. pull me out of it. So, um, but what happens is these people, what happens is these things cannot attach to you if the glue isn't there. Right. Okay. So we have to go back and say, okay, why is that there? Let's not blame these attachments. Let's not, you know, enable ourselves and say, oh, poor me. My life is horrible because I'm being attacked by demons type of thing. It's like, OK, I'll remove the demons and stuff or whatever you want to call it. But why are they there? Every single time somebody has a problem, somebody has an energy issue or anything, I look at them and say, why is that there? Even in my life, when I feel things are going off, it's like, what am I doing? Okay. It's very, very important to come in and say and take responsibility and not just in or inwards, but outwards. This means starting to take, you know, to clear up these energies inward. It helps to start clearing up your life outward, like starting yeah. to face things that you've never faced before, like face the tax man, face the dentist, face, face the insurances, you know, face the past bills, the past 20 years of things, you know, um, stepping up really stepping up to the plate but it's now here's the here's the catch 22 todd when you have all these energies on you it's hard to step out of it on your own it becomes this po point in the middle and that's where people like me are on the earth to say okay yeah. I'm here I'm here. I could I see. I see what's going on with you. Let's start pulling these things off. And then what happens is the relief is so amazing that I remember my first session, I felt for the first time igno truly acknowledged by God, by source, by angels and masters. And that feeling alone and experiencing the release of these energies and the feeling of acknowledgement, because when we have the courage, especially now during these times of 5D and all that, when we have the courage to fit, to come to God and to come to our light and say, God, I'm, I'm ready. Like I'm, I'm here. That's when the magic happens and things just start flying off like crazy. I've had some clients that have only had a couple sessions and their lives changed instantly where other people, it would take 20, 30, you know, to really get them out to their breaking point of yeah. okay, we're on the our side now. And it's, and it's, and it's uh, true too that, you know, I mean, I could go to, to you, you know, my partner is a, is a practitioner like you, an energy worker for many, many years. And it took me, even with our close relationship, it took me, it wasn't a language I understood. I, I right. moved it. So I could go to someone like you and it might take me two sessions. I could go to someone else. It might take me 20 sessions. Sure. But I think I think the important thing to remember here is if if we have the desire in our hearts to expand and grow and be open, we're in a universal energy now that's that's basically reciprocating us. In a, in a very, like you were saying earlier, the synchronicities are tighter and tighter. There's less time in between. That's that instant manifestation thing happening. That's but, right. Uh, I, but I think that's, uh, you know, that's something to remember, too, is, is that, you know, if you have the desire, because that's one thing about the human. I think about this sometimes. Like, what is it that the human being, the human hybrid soul species is bringing to the universal table? And I think about that, and I think there's, there's two, there's one thing, really. It's the heart, because regardless right. of what our history is, what has been given to us or what's true or not, there's one thing that's for damn sure. We have not quit. This heart has kept going. And if you look at crime, one third of crimes are crimes of passion. OK, I mean, it's the heart, the heart right in the middle is the ego and the soul split right down the middle. There's that zero point. This is the beautiful part of the human and I think for me, I'd love to hear your views on this. For me, it's like 
in embodying the human fully and stop, I stopped trying to get away from the things I did that I didn't like, or the things I experienced that I didn't want to remember. And I started to embrace the holy and whole human being. And, and that seemed to be the most important multidimensional aspect to bring alignment was the reverence and the honor and the love and respect for the human being that Todd is, you know? That's right. And that's very important. Self-love, self-worth, self-acceptance. Um, and it is, it's coming back into that, into the heart. And that's, that's the beauty of it. And it's like you said, we, we won't quit. Now, through all of my experience, it is all of the eight, this thousands of angels and masses, billions of angels and masters and beings of light that we don't even know the name of, okay, that are above, so to speak, in the frequency of angels and masters that are here to support us. Now, I'll explain more. As magnificent as archangels and all of them, right, are, Jesus, we're talking all of these energies. We are the only ones in the human body that can heal this earth. Yeah. So the angels and masters are here to got help us. They can't heal this world. Mm -mm. We are the ones that have to that chose to incarnate in the dark. Yeah. Hold our light. Why does bad happen to good people? Right? We had to come in and with that God light, we had to come into the darkness, to the, the uh, abuse and all these things to recognize it, uh, release it, and to choose to step into the, the new. Also, the people that are holding this vibration, they're also bringing in healing to their entire ancestry. So a lot yeah. of workers that feel like they're not doing anything just by them being alive and feel the light and love inside them they're they're doing it all they're that's an important yeah that's an important distinction because you do hear a lot of people saying again you know and again it is a it is a false fear-based programming that comes out looking like superiority inferiority separation separation but my point mm -hmm. is is yeah it's time that we all gave ourselves some credit we're all valiant souls we were all chosen and i bet you we were chosen because we freaking earned it you know, we earned it and we chose it too. Yeah. And we were yep. talking about that in the last show with Timothy. We were talking about, you know, we're sitting here trying to appraise ourselves and rate ourselves, engage ourselves based on our conscious memory. Right. right. Okay. We, we got to remember that not only do we sleep eight hours a day, but we don't sleep. We're out there doing the good work. Yeah, and it's right. directly related to our energetic movements here in the 3D world. And on top of that, the other 16 hours a day when we're conscious, there's a whole lot of stuff going on, a <laughs> whole lot of stuff going on that, again, is reflective of our energetic motions here. So do not underestimate the power of one unique and equal soul. Do not underestimate each and every moment that you're living because it has huge impact energetically across all dimensions. OK, and I personally believe this is how universes, worlds, planets, dreams are born. And I think there's some significance to the fact that we're going from duality to the holy triad and the triad being that offspring, just like we are, that offspring of let's call it the mother, father energy, whatever you want to call it, the right. masculine, feminine. And that is absolutely unknown and absolutely in our control. Uh, however you want to, uh, you know, how, whatever you want to produce, but it, it only is produced by the only thing that's real. And that's that universal energy, pure love, pure love. God is, this, is not, this is not a rerun. In other words, this is not a rerun. <laughs> right. this is a new <laughs> no. Oh, that's right. That's right. And that's why this whole past life thing is starting to the structure of it's breaking down. It's like, we're not, it's not a rerun now. Everything's different. And this is a, a big part of the healings that I do. It's people are used to this certain cause and effect. Okay, when I do this, this happens. But that doesn't hold true anymore in these higher dimensions that are now blending into ours. Things are different. So when we heal the traumas, when we heal and, uh, and release and, uh, and choose love, right? Choose love. That's hard for somebody that's been abused, yeah. right? 
It's hard. It's hard, it's hard to have faith. It's hard to have faith in that. And, and yeah. that's, a great, that's a great point. Yeah. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of, uh, man, it's not easy because, you know, we come here, we where we come from source, so to speak, heaven, whatever you want to call it. And we get there, we're so filled with light. And they were like, yes, let's go down to the earth and we're going to take, <laughs> take the hardest path. And I'm, Stand back, everybody. I got this. I'm yeah, yeah. Man, and take the hard road. And then we get here and we are as, as alone as can be. Yeah. Wondering why we would never choose this for ourselves. I don't know, man. I, I feel like, it, well, you know, I, I shared a transmission with my partner a couple of years ago. And the mother goddess frequency came into her. And so, you know, as the individual goes, so goes the collective. So whatever, you know, copy is a copy, however you want to put it. She says a copy is a copy is a copy. But I say that the individual journey is just a, a reflection of the collective. Uh, I was told that, hey, you knew what you were getting into, <laughs> but you didn't know. <laughs> so it was you like, were told you were going to be you were told that you were going to forget. And we said, ah, forever. Yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 somebody said a lone badass. Yeah. But you know, uh, yeah. So, but, but you know, regardless, it's like the stories, the story, they were relevant until they became irrelevant. Right. The connections with the divine essences, you know, we, we, many of us have gone through that whole thing where they were external in our minds and then they became embodied and internalized. Right. And then it all becomes further and further alignment until it's one voice and not 10, you know, or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well said. So, and, and then somebody asked a question and, and I'm just, I'm going to respect the questions uh, as I can. They're moving fast, but what right. about animal? What they said, what about animals? Uh, and I'll let you take that one. You know, what about animals? Do we have some type of mute, conversation telepathy that type of thing with the animal kingdom yeah absolutely animals are just another reflection of god exp ex ex finding out who it is so it's it's just another expression of light it's another just expression of divine um feeling what it's like to be in this energy of you know a dog or even a rock has an awareness tree has an awareness that it's a tree it adapts as time goes on so it's like uh, the animals, it's also, it's helping us. Um, the animal kingdom is helping us blend in with, uh, with light, uh, with love, with um, very, very powerful. A lot of people, a lot of people like animals more than they like people. So that, that explains a beautiful transition for the, of their healing, okay? Or into their spirituality. A lot of people feel they can communicate with animals. Uh, they feel more comfortable with animals. So it's just another aspect of God expressing itself. And it's another aspect of unconditional love, 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 love. Especially since animals, um, you know, people didn't think that animals even had souls or they didn't have memory or they didn't have feelings. But as time goes on, the, the, awakening within animals are the same is the same awakening that humans are going through so if you notice animals are doing things that they would not normally do before okay yeah. uh you know where like cats are acting like dogs yeah. now well yeah i mean it, it you know it's uh i totally agree with that uh i i and and you know what uh it's not something i've spent a lot of time thinking about because i never had to but it, it goes deeper than an animal has a soul you know, I went out to the lagoon uh, the other night down the road here. And so it was basically the wind, the stars, the clouds, the trees, the cliffs, the water. And I go into the into the water and, and, and it was a, you know, what do you want to call it? A meditation, a communion or whatever. But what started to happen was these little fish started like forming a circle around me. And they were like, they were like talking, you know, they were like, hey, hey, you know, and then you know, with beyond, beyond uh, the normal 3d way yeah. of how you would describe and see that it's like, they're all collapsing together. So I think that, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, Good point. Uh, it's, and, and, and the other thing is the, whatever's happening to us is happening to everything. 
because I know like here, since I've been in Hawaii for three weeks, uh, the plants and the trees, I mean, I've talked to the trees for seven years, but it's different now. It's like a whole, like a whole big, like the church just got about a million times bigger. You know? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, whoa, it's like talk about universal representation. And I also, I also have a feeling, I'm not going to say that, you know, but I, and again, to stay open to any possibility, but I think, you know, I, I've had a lot of run-ins with cats in the last two years and, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're, you know, our body's a vehicle, maybe that body's a vehicle for, cause I get some strong galactic, uh, Lyrian type of, uh, communications from cats and, 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 uh, support, I guess, and validation. And the same goes with other types of animals, you know? Oh, it's, it's beyond what we can imagine. They don't have the resistances that we have. They don't have the, uh, the judgment, right? Animals are more like instant, you know, they react to what, what's going on as time, as time moves on, they're starting to develop this stuff. They're starting to develop, um, uh, these senses, uh, of, of what's happening. Um, and with with this energy of animals expanding, um, they have this pureness to them that we weren't born into. All right. So really, overall, they're they're more pure than what we were born into. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I've often thought, too, because when I started this trip, they, they showed me trees for a day and a half. I'm like, what, you know, what does that mean? <laughs> but that the trees, I mean, we, we were, again, we're praising and rating and judging really right. uh, things based on a bunch of disinformation <laughs> right down to the etymology of words and such, you know, but uh, I look at these things and, and the trees and I think, man, these are the original OGs right here. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is the, the communication network I use. I, I, I see the etherics of their roots going into Gaia. I see them reaching out into the cosmos. I mean, their branches are much bigger than what they look in the physicality. So that's right. There's something about there's something about the trees that that uh, carries to me. I, I don't look at anything at a, in an echelon basis or hierarchy, but if there's any elders, that's it. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, they're the physical uh, elders. Yeah, yeah, they're the, like the Yodas. Yeah. <laughs> now so, now some people have asked how they find you so i'm gonna uh encourage you to uh go into the Sology group uh the facebook Sology group and uh, it's a great place to get your information out but also to put uh any links that you have in the comments and before you do that uh maybe you can tell us verbally how to get get in touch with you or find you the best way is follow me on Facebook and then connect with me on Messenger or um, my um, email address, which is my last name, W-Y-R-O-S-T-E-K, number one at gmail.com. Those are the two. Th those are really the best, the easy ways. Okay. And so, and you had mentioned earlier, because uh, somebody turned me on to you. Uh, and I can't remember because I get so much messages. Debbie. It was a Debbie. Debbie. Okay. I can't remember. Debbie was, I think it was two different people because somebody messaged me like three months ago. and was like, you got to get on Todd's show. Yeah. Then I didn't so, hear so, anything. And then now yeah. here. Yeah. Now, nah, sorry about that. <laughs> I don't do 3D things very well, but I'm getting some help now. Me so, neither. Uh, you mentioned something about a video. You were thinking about doing a video on a certain subject. Do you do videos? I yeah I I, I, oh yeah that's right you can subscribe to my youtube channel just type my name and subscribe um and yeah i do i pr pretty much put out videos like once a week or something like that and it's teaching people it's helping people i give people an energy update almost every week about what i feel is what's going on even some astrology added in there as um and i do workshops i do um i do one-on-one -on -one sessions via phone or messenger anywhere yeah. in the World, whether it's Skype and uh, I do a lot of group healings, which a group healing actually started today that people could join in on. And then it doesn't Excellent. many. It's just a beautiful experience. 
That's excellent. And uh, I'm happy to hear that and happy to make the connection right now because we are on the cusp. Uh, we had a we had a very successful uh, meeting, two meetings today uh, to launch this 24 seven 365 network of multiple channels that uh, can continue can expand forever. And I'd love to uh, and I'll reach out to you uh, if you've got an archive already being developed and you've got some what we want to do is create one place where we all go. And uh, it's out from under the constrictions of the matrix. There's no rules and regulations. It's a free universe, so everything's free. And uh, we just kind of, you know, make, make, uh, expand this, uh, this experience through this collaboration. Uh, it's made up of everybody, the 99.9%. That's <laughs> so awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to you with that and uh, keep up the great work. I look forward to sitting down with you again uh in the future and having an, another conversation thank you for uh joining us and honoring us with your presence and thank you everybody for um joining us we'll be back probably in, in a couple hours with something else you know <laughs> awesome thank you everybody and thank you todd for having me yeah and uh geraldine says paul is not only inspirational he's also beautiful all right ladies <laughs> hold your hold <laughs> contain yourself ladies <laughs> All right. You take care, Paul.